Can I be sponsored yet? Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Bill and this is Trying to Stand, where I try new things in pop culture because I've been living under a rock. Today, I'm adding yet another artist to Trying to Stand, someone who's been suggested a lot lately, and judging from the comments and both the suggested video here in the side, you also might be buds with Dodie. This makes me excited, it's fine. A friend of Dodie is a friend of mine. But I don't know anything about you, Tessa Violet, and I'm, I'm excited to find out. Uh, everyone's been saying great things in the comments when they suggest your music, so I'm just, I'm excited. Thank you again, guys, for always leaving me suggestions of artists that you enjoy. It really means so much to me that I'm, you know, people trust me with music that they like to talk about it and stuff. I just, it just makes me happy. And we're starting with Haze. Um, I think this is a music video, it looks, like it, whatever, I'm here to listen to music. I uh, I don't have a joke for that. Let's just jump, let's just jump right in. I'm just cloudy and confused mentally, going through a fog. Found it, found the bit. Whoa, hi. Overwhelmed by every little thing. Ooh, damn. I like your voice, I like this bass. Nothing only takes me. Ooh, damn. I'm at a boy. What, ah! Okay. Oh, that's a reference. Ooh, that gave me chills. Holy crap. And then it gets ruined by a Taco Bell ad. <laughs> oh God, that was so fascinating and captivating. Your voice is amazing. There was something about how it just kept churning and like the textures musically kept varying so much and it was very like bass heavy, but then like it kind of had like static and like brief distortions in it, like an emotional dissidence with yourself. I like the underlying tone of, I don't think something's wrong with me, but like something to be discovered walking through a haze. The music keeps you at like this, like, like you're mentally just like, on your toes, like you're at, you're constantly like on edge, or like at bay, like kind of traversing this like complicated feeling. That was fascinating. And I love the way it just like, not churning, but like grinding. Like you could really feel like crushing, like, you know, like what are those things called? Where it's like, you can crush like seasonings and herbs and stuff in it. It's like a stone thing. And you have like the stick and you put the stick in the butthole, you know. I always called it a grinder. I, I, I guess a grinder, but that's, that's a sexy app. You know what I'm talking about. I'll probably put up a picture because I'm gonna get pissed at myself in editing. There was something about it where it's it sounded like it was something that was being dissected and examined and like you could you could feel like that that like press against and like unearthing it. Like digging. I like the grinding thing visually is what I kept thinking of, but now I keep picturing like people grinding. I really love your voice. I loved that. I think it's about exploring yourself and like kind of what, I don't want to say sexuality per se, but like like the things that you like and sort of the disconnect of how you feel. Like I think it's just about understanding yourself and how you feel or take in emotions. It could even be arguably like a lack of them even, like how you perceive and approach other people. Is it aromantic or aromatic? I never know how to say it. I think so too. I always read it as aromatic because I'm a doof. Good or bad seems nothing could take away this tasteless haze. Maybe it's about not feeling satisfied. It's fascinating though. Like I can still hear it in my head. Ooh, maybe it's about being jaded. It starts with, I used to be overwhelmed by every little thing. I get drunk on a boy who asks me if I'm up. Like, you know, those late night hey texts with three Y's and a winky smiley face. Having like less than ideal or less than great relationship. The boy who asked me if I'm up happened between feeling everything and then suddenly it's leave you crying for a kiss and nothing satiates me. And I don't think that I hate me like a circuit in my chest. Like maybe it's just not about having a romantic connection with people or even about having a more cold or callous response to it. I don't know if like it's the idea of being hurt or if it's just the idea of not having those kind of feelings at all in a relationship. Lyrically, it has this kind of like callous vibe to it, but then the music, like it keeps kind of like going in and out in bursts. Like it's, like I said, like that action of like, or grinding. Like it's almost like trying to make it happen. You know what I mean? Like kind of like revving a dead engine, if that makes any sense. And like still kind of feeling disconnected as you're trying to figure it out. Nothing's quite clicking yet. Like you're staying confused. Like the gears are starting to turn, but like there's something missing. Like even, even when that like distortion kind of happens with the bass, it kind of goes in and out. Like there's like pieces still kind of missing. Like it's still not 
the pe like nothing's fitting yet. My words are getting caught and I try to walk it off. My brain is filled with fog, disconnecting my mouth from my thoughts. Like it's still like you can't put your finger on it and like no one else has kind of helped you. You know what I mean? Like you're still kind of tracing around it. I'm trying to make this not sound sexual, but it's just gonna sound sexual. I apologize. I think that's kind of the idea is it is so indirect and unknown and you really kind of feel it. Like it has like a like a beautiful, like kind of dark, uh, Danny Elfman-y kind of a sound to it. I really love it. But I love that it sort of illustrates for you musically like that confusion or at least not confusion, but like that uncertainty and that like you're still kind of exploring the unknown. I really like the feeling of it and I like not just sitting on the, the sentiment of, is there something wrong with me? But like, was I just built differently? Like, is this a thing? Do other people feel like this? Like not just completely throwing it away. Well, I'm just crazy, but still addressing that part of you that does feel crazy when you're, when you're not quite going through what you think you should or what other people are. And I kind of like the exploration of that, like owning up to those thoughts and sentiments, but still adding in that positive one of, was I just built differently? I think it's both very valid in what people could be feeling, but also still brings that, that silver lining of like, you know, it might feel like nothing's wrong with you, but nothing is wrong with you. Like I kind of like, we're exploring a lot more facets than just putting yourself down. And I really like that. I too feel like my brain is filled with fog and I'm disconnecting my mouth from my thoughts. And maybe that's it. Maybe the song itself is just really good at bringing you into that headspace. It kind of embodies the desired feeling, that's super cool. I kind of like how now by thinking about the song, I too am not able to quite pinpoint it. Like now I'm searching through a haze. And next we have Crush, uh, the orange soda fountain drink. I think it's also in like strawberry and grape and right? Like Crush. I think they have a banana one too. That's Fanta, come on now. And next we have Crush, the official music video. Is it about soda? I can't focus on what needs to get done. Ooh. The editing keeps freaking me out. It looks like it's in 3D. And I'm just trying to play cool. Like, I, I'm so worried for your safety. Like, get down from there. Ooh, I like the the way the chorus works where it's like a heart flutter. Touch, touch, touch. <laughs> There's something about, like, the fluttery of the music and then that hard stare from time to time. Like, I'm trying to keep up with it visually. Both her movements and, like, the... The sort of stopping back and stopping back. I don't know what that would actually be called. It had like the same kind of flirty, nervous energy as someone that you just met and feel like just a little thing about. And then kind of like the, like the lyrics were saying, keeping it real early, like maybe we'll text, like not wanting to take it to that next place quite yet. And it really kind of did remind me of, you know, being lightly interested, flirty kind of like, or even like pre-flirty. That's really the thing I liked about the song so much too, was like, it stayed pre-flirty. Not like downplaying the feeling, but just like kind of being not only forward with what you want from this exchange and like, you know, trying to play it cool, but that's not what I want to do now. It's so interesting. It's like a decimal point of being like engaged in somebody. But I liked how kind of, you know, like playful it was. Like it felt flirty, the levels of the emotion in the song and then the occasional like intense staring and stuff, like kind of being a little, weird and kind of being a little goofy. And I really liked that because it, it sort of played with, in a space without worrying about commitment or, you know, impressing someone, getting someone to return interest in you. You can kind of be a little bit more of yourself and you can kind of be a little bit more relaxed and a little more free. Like, I don't know, like there's something about like both acknowledging the feeling so it wasn't like, you weren't turning away from anything. By giving it less gravity, you're giving us as humans more complexity while not every like time you make eye contact it must mean something but also like just because it it doesn't mean something big doesn't mean it doesn't mean something at all that makes any sense i'm trying to think of how to say this it's like not every moment has to turn into a huge moment they can stay little moments and i like kind of giving power to those little moments and giving emphasis to those little moments i don't know it's also not acting like as if nothing will ever happen but i like that feeling of not expecting it to go places and like i said then you're kind of a little bit uninhibited. Is that a word? Uninhibited? You give yourself a little bit more permission to be yourself when you don't play to an expectation, but it doesn't mean you're not hoping for like, you know, the feeling to be returned, just like how it would give your imagination course to run a little more wild. Like the video kind of does it too. Kind of like the lyrics are saying, like suddenly we're not focusing on picking out our food, checking out and leaving the grocery store. Like we're mentally just bouncing and all over the place. I think it's really sweet and very 
charming and fun. I don't know why I'm gonna use Katy Perry's Firework as an example. It's gonna sound like that. I promise you it's it's not. I have nothing against that song. But it's like so many people write songs about the firework going off, but who writes the song about the lighter igniting before it even hits the wick? And I think that's what's so fascinating about it is it's it's not even about lighting the firework and waiting for it to launch. It's about the the lighter starting to ignite. That small fleeting kind of moment and really stretches it out into like a completed thought and sensation. And I kind of like exploring that part of life and emotions and the human condition. Like there's something to be said about that, that feeling being so ignored in a general sense and like delving into it a little further. And you know, you start to kind of feel that like pitter pattern that excitement how freeing that is because like there's no reality playing out yet there's no reaction consequence or action behind you sending out that like having that electricity so you can kind of let your imagination run wild and i think the song kind of does that like you stay in that headspace I'm hoping to lay like the slightest bit of breadcrumb just to kind of have that look back or that notice back you know what i mean you just get excited for tessa violet like i don't know it feels just it, personal it, it, it's very human and because it gets so specific with where it is in that like pre-flirty realm it, you feel closer to the point and the the emotion behind it i just liked it all right and next we have bad ideas which makes me kind of nervous the official music video i want to make out with you oh oh tessa violet's the bad guy Thing that fails me. Whoa! <laughs> Sorry, I hope that was an effect. Oh my gosh, it really threw me off. That was really interesting. That was another one where like, again, it just feels so personal because it's like a little bit weird and a little bit awkward. Maybe that's kind of been the through line of these songs so far is like wanting to find the right way to express yourself. I love like just that lyric of, I want to kiss you standing up, wanting it to be public. Like when I think like kissing standing up, I'm thinking like at a park, on the street. I was like, the lyric was something, hold on. The lyric was something about the sheets. Smitten's a bad look on me and if I'm talking honestly, it takes everything I got not the text and I just want a kiss to get me through because now all my bed sheets smell like you. Maybe it's about wanting the relationship to be at another level. There's just something about it where it, like, it has like this kind of giddy innocence and excitement to it, but also like trying to stay grounded long enough to like express yourself. Uh, I just want to kiss you and even if I miss you, at least I'll know what it's like to have held your hand. First, it was making me think like wanting the relationship to start, but it feels like an element of like at least like physical intimacy has already started and like wanting it to progress and like almost like this is <laughs> hour one into like the three day rule. You know what I mean? Like wanting to play it cool, being just more of yourself and hoping that, you know, can I touch your face? Or could I touch my face to yours? Sorry. I, damn it. Like there's something so intimate about these songs, like both in the mental headspace, but then it's also very sweet. The more like these lyrics, like keep getting more specific and like kind of, you know, like awkward, quirky and weird. Like it just, it's so endearing. And it just, it really feels like I'm in someone's diary or in someone's head. And I, I absolutely love that from an artist. You're so, like, you're just so open and inviting to like what actually goes through your head or, you know, at least what that feeling feels like. Not wanting to like do the disservice of quelling or ignoring what you're feeling right now. Like, I love the visuals of it. I loved the way it played with colors. And like, there's times where like, you know, kind of like I was saying, like bad guy, like bursting out of the background and wanting to like reach forward and already like knock down those walls, but then also kind of like hiding and trying to like be casual and then cutting your bangs. Like it's just, you can kind of feel a lot of that, that stress and like feeling the expectation of like waiting, you know, waiting for the other person to make a move or waiting for enough time to like text or whatever. And it's like not really wanting to do that, like wanting to still be excited and entranced by another person and, and just wanting to express that. Like I love kind of the chaotic energy of it. Like you can feel the song like overthinking it and starting to stress out about it. You could really feel the lifeblood of the emotion as well as the situation and the story. There's something so open about it. I just really liked it. And her voice is so lovely too. Like, holy crap. Oh, this is so nice. I don't want to jinx it, but like nothing's making me cry. Nothing's making me hurt. This is just nice. I needed this. <laughs> I just, oh. 
<laughs> Hand me a pina colada, get me caught in the rain. This is just a nice feeling right now. Please don't f with me. <laughs> Let's just keep this trajectory going up and fun. Please, 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 please. And next is the official music video for Tessa Violet's I Like the Idea of You. I like the idea of you. That's all I'm thinking of right now. That's it's stupid. I hate my brain for making that connection. Ooh. Is this song gonna f Ha! <laughs> Ooh! Ooh! Yeah, this song fucks. I couldn't tell you why, but I love steer choreography so much. Choreography? Jesus, what's wrong with me today? Ooh, I like these kind of Fosse moments we're having here. Yes! Okay. I love your voice. That was sexy as hell. It's interesting though to go from like all these songs about like flirty energy to the standoffish kind of energy. I really like that. But that's just this playlist. Already like I'm a big sucker for like that Fosse infused choreography throughout. I really liked that, but I just, there was something so empowering about it. Like, I don't know. Like I said, like the song just like there was something about like repeating the way you say my name, trying to convince people that you're not right for me. Like it's like after being so emotionally excited about people, then it was like, like almost like it kind of reversed. And now I'm listening to these songs where it's like, it was a good time, but like just a good time. Instead of leaning forward in anticipation, like kind of pushing away, trying to fabricate reasons why you shouldn't be together, like trying to take it slow. But I like this idea of, you know, being so intrigued by somebody, but also being so reserved. Like that's just kind of the, the vibe and the energy I got. And especially again with the Fosse choreography, be choreography, I can't say that word right now. With the Fosse choreography, like, like the intricate little movements, it's very stimulating and it kind of gets you thinking. And I love her voice, especially when she starts to flip a little higher. She has such a clear tone to her and it just, I don't know, like it had like that little extra like release in the song about physical relationships. Tell your story, tell your truth, you do you. But I love when it's a song about like sensuality and relationships and there's not a lot of like gender specific verbiage. Like it just makes it very open. Yeah, and it's like kind of enjoying having the ball in your court, feeling empowered in a relationship. I like that. That made me sweat. And we're closing out the night with Bored, the official music video. One more to get through without getting sad. And we have we finally have a video where I just don't get sad at all. Bingo. <laughs> Non-emotional bingo. <sighs> all right, we're closing out the night with the official, with the official, the official music video for Tessa Violet's Bored. I see the little hashtag stay home on the video. This could be a little pandemic pop. I'm here for it. Staying up too late, just so I can stay awake. Me. Oof. Oh. And I can't get out of bed. Oh, oh God, me. I'm so bored. Oh, damn. But I keep it all inside. Ooh. I'm so bored. Oh, damn. Fuck. That really didn't pull a punch, and I appreciate respect you for it. I very much appreciate speaking on mental health, feeling repetitive, feeling boxed in, trapped. I liked the idea of using it as a bedroom. I don't, I, I, I can only imagine this was filmed before the pandemic. I don't know. I really love like the attention to feeling stagnant or not feeling productive, being hard on yourself, stifled and like kind of lost. I love kind of touching on those things because it's like it's very real and I don't know like we can make jokes here all we want and have fun here but like there is a lot that's very relatable to this both to how I feel in 2020 but also just before that like times where like you just can't you can't bring yourself to put pen to paper to focus on something long enough to follow through on it or be inspired or get an idea and you start to kind of dwell and kind of put a lot more pressure on yourself trying to express yourself through like different outfits and things but still being trapped inside and i loved how the music started to really swell like it started to feel like this was going to resolve with leaving and obviously in 2020 i really i really appreciate it appreciate it not resolving and leaving. It felt like the issue is to be resolved internally. That ending sentiment where it was, uh, you feel trapped, but it's nothing but smoke. Uh, you want 
better, but you only choke. It's okay to feel this way. It's, it's okay to feel stifled, losing motivation, losing focus. Like, that's okay. It's something going on with you and like, you know, encouraging you to process it over trying to just fix it. Like, don't don't put a bandaid on this. Don't ignore this. Like, acknowledge this, work with this. And I, I really liked that sentiment to it like acknowledging that it is work like don't give up uh there's something about like being labeled a drag i'm just gonna start going through the lyrics but i i really like this feeling of perseverance and not giving up and like you know sitting there bored and stagnant realizing you can't give up and like finding the strength to sit back down and now reflect and like listen to yourself take in what's going on like acknowledge what you're going through and what you're feeling like i liked how it wasn't solved by leaving the room it wasn't solved by getting rid of the the decorations on the wall or it wasn't an external solution like it was the realization that you know something's going on with you internally and sitting down to focus on that because it already starts like with literally insomnia and then feeling like you've hit like a like writer's block, you know, the things that you're turning to, it's like, it's not even a distraction because now you're focusing on, you know, social media with like, oh, I need to be justified by the photos on my phone. What used to be like outlets and what used to be fun are now you're starting to like dwell on them. And it's like, sometimes it's time to like set things down and like, you know, say hello to yourself. Is it gone? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, the camera battery died in the middle of my weird tangent about this really incredible song about just stress and depression. I really liked that. Like, I liked how, you know, it stayed, you know, one location, very grounded. It's very jarring because it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's specific enough for quarantine, but it just fits so well. But I feel like it's about depression and like that sentiment of like being hard on yourself, pressures that you put on yourself, but also like feeling like you're getting stuck in a rut, that isolation and trying so hard to find an external solution, but end of the day, like it's, it's, you need to take care of yourself, you know? Like just feeling overwhelmed and anxious and I don't know, as someone who's been suffering from a lot of insomnia, I appreciate the shout out. It, it, trying to like pinpoint a problem, but it's nothing but smoke. Like not only is there nothing wrong with feeling this way, it's not something you can point a finger at and like really nail down and analyze on your own. Let yourself just process and find that thing for you to focus on and I think that's a big thing about it too is it feels a lot about anxieties and not being able to fully commit or complete something and sometimes you know you'll get sick of the things that used to help there's something very giving about this sentiment both the the, the song but then also the visual where it does give you a lot of hope and like the music does start to kind of change but then that change literally as she's looking at herself which I really liked. She's like looking at these pictures of her and she's like slamming one of them against the bed and it's it's still on the wall. The wallpaper's not coming out. It's not something that's an, exter an external thing. It feels very personal. I feel like I'm being given a bit of a tour inside uh, something you're feeling or something you felt. Uh, I love how personal it feels, but I also love there's no immediate solution. There's hope, there's definitely hope, but I think it's just about you know, spiraling and trying to steady yourself and trying to, you know, find something to do and focus on. And sometimes you just can't. As much as it doesn't give you an immediate solution, I feel like it does give you that sentiment of it's okay. There will be times where you will feel like this, obviously a lot right now, but like it really does kind of give you permission to feel this, but also does give you that hope of like, you know, there, there will be a way to, to figure this out one day. I think that's part of it. I think it's about communicating it and realizing that like, while in a pre 2020 world, it's harder to grasp the concept of you're not alone in these thoughts. Like it's okay to have these moments and to have these times in your life and to, you know, kind of slow down and not have a path really set in front of you that you can see or feel like you're not on one right now. I think in a pre 2020 world, that thought's a little harder to uh, communicate and get across to others. But I, I feel like especially right now in 2020, Remember that when you're feeling frustrated or stressed or overwhelmed or hard on yourself, like not only is it okay to feel that way, but a lot of other people, everybody else is feeling that way right now as well. And I think there's something comforting in being reminded of that. I think that's really important. It got heavy at the end, but like I felt a little called out, I won't lie. I too have been awake until 4 a.m. just staring and trying to find something that will help me sleep, but also dreading sleep. I'm also the kind of person who, when I get into the right mindset, I'm like, eh, it's like fast forwarding if I fall asleep. 
but I hate that feeling of just feel like literally like you can feel time passing on your skin. It's horrible. I do applaud the sentiment of making sure that people know that you're not the only one who feels that way and like taking comfort in that, you know? I love that and I love her voice. She has such a way of having this like hollowed longing kind of feeling to her, but also it has such a, a firm grip on the feelings that she has. Like there's times where you can feel like her emotions or her mind start to kind of wander. And like I said, you feel like you're in someone's diary or in someone's thoughts, and then you can feel it sharpen and, and stick and point forward. And I really love that. Ironically, as the last song is about being so overwhelmed, this is a nice break from being so overwhelmed. I really liked your stuff, but yeah. There you guys go. Those are my thoughts. What do you guys think? What do you think of my thoughts? What do you think of the songs? Are there more Tessa Violet songs you want me to listen to? Other artists you want me to check out? Let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video if you did. Subscribe if you want more. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, it's been a really overwhelming time for me, but like I appreciate you guys helping me kind of ease back into making more content. Don't forget in the description, there are links to Black Lives Matter information and resources, as well as the Trevor Project, and also mental health resources to you or somebody you know need them. Be safe out there, guys. Be mindful and respectful of others. And remember to take care of yourselves, please.